Hello everyone. Wanted to take some time to show you a, uh, one of the examples of how I use composites in my sessions or during my sessions. I mentioned in the PDF guide that um, a lot of times I'm doing it for safety and in Froggy Pose that's one of the main examples of when I would use a composite. Um, and then the next video I'll show you kind of how you can use composites a bit more creatively to add a little more variety to your gallery so you don't always have to do, um, you know, a, multiple setups. You could do one setup and then even get two different type images out of it and still have it look pretty natural. I don't like when my composites um, get a little more um, crazy, for lack of a better word. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and I do um, all of my solo baby images when I'm editing them, I do those in Photoshop. When I'm working with a family gallery, I'll sometimes batch the, the family part of it in Lightroom, but then I still pull those images over into Photoshop to do a little bit more work on the baby skin, just because as you can see, this is the straight out of camera, and babies are quite often red or pink or have you know scratches on their face. So here we are in Photoshop, and I have both of the images ready to go. When you do froggy, as we talked about, you're going to take two different shots, one where you hold the bottom of their wrist, and then one where you're holding the top of her head. Um, so I always, I like to start with, I like to bring the head portion over. I don't know why, it's just kind of what I learned, and that's how I like to work. So just go ahead and grab your lasso tool. And because I know my hand was kind of coming from this direction, I want to grab as much of this over here as I can. And then go up to your menu bar and do edit, copy. Go to your other image and select edit, paste. And now go over to your layers panel. And this is the layer, see I can turn it on and off. This is the layer that we just brought over. Reduce the opacity just so you can see both layers and you can see, I'm sorry, both images and you can see the size of baby's head. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to grab my transform tool and to do that I hit the command and the T. And now you can move this top layer around and work on lining them up. Uh, you'll definitely want to make sure that the baby is the same size. That's one of the, the quickest ways to mess up a composite if your babies aren't scaled the same way. Um, you can see here where the chin ends in one example and the chin ends in another. Now, I am not going to bring the whole image over. All I really need is this portion over here, so I'm not going to worry about that. But if for some reason, if you need more of the image, make sure the babies are lined up. Um, so now I'm going to hit enter because I like how I've lined that up. And I'm going to make it a little, I'm going to bring my opacity all the way back up just to kind of see what we did. And now I'm bringing it back down. So now you want to add a layer mask and you want it to be on white. So you can see, as you can see, we, we can see the top layer that we brought over. Um, but clearly it's not lining up properly. So now we want, with our black brush, make sure your brush is on black. I'm changing the size of my brush tool. And I'm just going to brush off all of this excess stuff that I don't need. Whoops, I need our little crown. I had just taken the crown off in this example because uh, it was sliding around and I kind of knew that once I had once I had it on there that I didn't need it anymore. And I actually kind of forgot that her crown was off. So what I'm gonna do I'm probably going to liquefy her crown a bit. It didn't fit her head perfectly. Okay, so as you can see, now what I typically do is I hit the slash key just to see where I've removed the other layer that we brought in, just to make sure I'm not missing anything. This part I know I haven't masked off, but that's the part I want to keep from, from this. Now, the, the lighting's a little different because my hand would have been causing a shadow. So you can also reduce the opacity of your brush and that kind of helps blend it in a little better. Oh, 
Oops. And then again, if you, if, you, if you hit a button and you don't like it, just change to a white brush and you can paint back on. Okay, so I'm thinking that looks pretty good. And then I typically, I just, brought, I just turn the mask on and off to see what we're dealing with. And when I do that, I can see that this line is pretty harsh here. So with a reduced opacity brush, I'm also just gonna kind of swipe across there to blend that in with my black brush. And I'm not worried about this too much now. I'm gonna fix that later. Okay, so again, turning the mask on and off, you can see where you need to make changes. Um, and that's it. That's how I would do the composite. Now this isn't an edited image. I'm going to um, start that in another video just so that this one doesn't get too long.